out in the workshop and I just had a little bit more I wanted to do on this coffee bar we're doing. Um, I got uh, it partly stained and, and shellacked and I got all the dressers painted yesterday. There's a little bit of touch up I need to do on those. But I wanted to um, get started on the decoupage of the drawer fronts and also um, show you how that whole process works, how I do it, and it's pretty standard really. Um, and then also uh, a stencil on the door front and then I think we'll leave it there for today. Um, but it's getting close to being done. I basically just have to go pick out some new hardware for the doorknobs because it had these old um, brown wood knobs on them and I don't think they're that impressive. So I really don't typically use the old wooden knobs. I don't know why, but they're not my thing. So I'm going to go get some uh, new ones of those and shop around for those on Friday. But I'm getting very close to being done. Um, and the stenciling I know a lot of people have trouble with. I do too sometimes. I have to be careful and just remind myself not to gob the paint on it just to just go slow with it a little bit. So um, if you come on and you're watching, I can't see all the comments because I'll have my back too and I, I have my cell phone I'm recording on and it's just a little print. So, But I'm going to point you down. If you watch this later, leave a comment. Um, or a question if you have a question about the whole process. Um, I'll show you a few of the things that I will be using. So, um, and another thing, we have I think like 22 videos up on um, YouTube um, under Flandrance Interiors. We have our website with some blog posts on it uh, to do with interior decor and that sort of thing. And that's at flandranceinteriors.com. And then, of course, join our Facebook uh, group. And if you follow us on Facebook, you should get a notifier as to when these lives come up. Uh, but if you don't get a notifier, please let me know. I just started doing these lives maybe a month and a half ago. And I do furniture all the time, so I'm always working on something and trying to find something interesting to show people as well. Uh, my garage is full of neat things that we're going to be working on, so be sure to follow, be sure to share, be sure to check out our YouTube uh, page and subscribe there so you don't miss anything. Um, I have my favorites that I watch and I just lay in bed and watch them for hours. It's, it's my thing. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm going to put my glasses on and I'll show you what we're working with today. So, um... For a stencil brush, I'm going to turn my sound off here because somebody keeps binging me. Okay, for stencil brushes, um, I just use these flat um, natural bristle brushes. This is a one inch one and this is a half inch one. Um, I so I tend to kind of like them and kind of not. When you when you stencil, you you dab them into the, the paint and the paint onto the stencil, I mean, and sometimes they leave little stipple marks. If you like stipple marks, it's fine, but um, some people use little sponges or they'll use a makeup sponge, the little white ones or whatever, and that works too. These are okay. I just find I need about two good layers. On the first layer, if you want to seal the edges of your stencil, put a really thin layer with these. And pardon the fingernails, I've been sanding stuff. Um, so we're, we'll do that in a bit. Um, what I wanted to show you was I bought this package of, um, this is a tissue material. It's a wrapping tissue, they call it. Um, and I got it from Amazon. I think it was like $12 for this roll, 11 or $12, but there's like probably 50 feet of tissue on it. It's really neat if you can see it. It has all kinds of writing on it, post stamps, postcards, telegrams. Um, so I'm going to be using that for the drawer fronts and the reason is it's very antique looking but also I want the brown in it to show up on my drawer front because um, I'm trying to try trying to tie in something brown with the gray that we have on the drawers so that it ties in with the rest of the, the brown on the unit. So that I have cut. Um, I just went ahead and cut four pieces for the drawers. And I just cut them the length of my drawers. So they're, they're no special cut. Um, and I'll show you why I did that. I have a few of those. 
I have my roller and I'm going to be using for the decoupage material, I'm going to be using um, Fusion Mineral Paints Ultra Grip. I like the Ultra Grip because it's super sticky. Um, you just have to work it a little bit to get it to work really well. But I'm just using an old roller that I'll probably, you can wash Ultra Grip out because it's water soluble, but I'll probably just throw this out after. Hi, how are you guys? Um, and when I do the stencil, I'm going to be using, again, I'm, I'm pulling some of the brown. Um, it's the Fusion Mineral Paints Chocolate. And I just have a sample pot of this because I don't like painting anything chocolate. So I'm just gonna use that just to do the stencil in a little bit here. And like I said, if you guys comment or whatnot during this, uh, once I have my back to you, I probably won't be able to see you because my cell phone's like this big. <laughs> so um, you can leave a comment though. Okay, so. Um, I have got a drawer ready to go here, but I won't show you that one yet. This is one that I have done. I'll point you down here. Uh, I got the front of this one on. Hi, Kim. How are you? Um, hopefully you can see that pretty well. I'm not sure if my tripod's too high. Let me... Uh, well, no, I need my tripod to be high. But this drawer is done, so that's how the decoupage on the drawer is going to be. And this is the tissue material, as I was saying. It's one that I ordered off of Amazon. It was pretty inexpensive. There's about probably 50 feet on the roll. It's kind of a neat tissue because it's papery on the back, but it's almost got like a plasticky feel to the front. It's really beautiful stuff. Um, it is called... Just so you maybe want to order some. Um, I think it's really neat stuff. It's called Jim Holtz Ideology. That's the name of this tissue paper. Okay, so let's get cracking here. So I'm going to bring you guys over here to my little workbench. And this is where I'm going to be putting the... Uh, sorry, it's bright there, I think. A little bit too bright. This is where I'm going to be decoupaging the um, tabletop. So I have uh, three coats of Fusion Putty. This is the putty color. It's a very light gray, and I really like it. I have not sanded it back after my third coat because I want the roughness for the Ultra Grip as well as the paper. So um, you, you can sand it back at this point. It's just I didn't. Um, and what I'm going to do is take my Ultra Grip, and I tend not to use a lot of bowls and trays and stuff, so bear with me if you think my technique is horrible, then that's okay. But I just pour it on. And it doesn't matter if you pour it on, what matters is that you spread it out really well. So taking my roller, and the reason I'm using a roller is because I think that it spreads on the surface quite a lot better than if it was brushed on. So that's got a little bit on. And then you just want to check the sheen in the light. Um, make sure that you've got it right over to these edges. Go this way. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit on your painted edge, that's fine. It doesn't matter at all because I'm going to be putting a coat of uh, either tough coat or poly on this after. So I can check in the light, make sure I've got, got it everywhere. Okay, so that's good. So then what I do is, um, I'm trying to center these a little bit differently. The, the paper is much wider than the drawer part that I need. So I can use different sections basically like that. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'll use more of the letter in here. I'm just going to pop this right where I think I might want it. And then I'm just going to smooth it. So just start in the middle and smooth it out. If you get any wrinkles, pull it up and take it out. It's just like doing wallpaper, if you've ever done wallpaper. Um, I put it on my wet my ultra grip wet. Some people let the ultra grip dry first and then they do it. 
but I'll show you what I do. This is, and I don't use a brayer, but you can use a brayer, which is that little hard roller to um, really press it down. But it's, it's paper that has a little bit of a coating on it, so I'm okay pressing hard into it. So that is that. And I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes. And I'll do the next one. So once you get your your paper cut out, so I have a hair in there from yesterday that I'm gonna pop out. Once you get your paper cut out, um, you know, just kind of eyeball things and see how you want it set up on your your actual picture. That might be a little bit too much here, or on your actual drawer front because you don't want your drawer fronts. In this case, because it has random lettering, I don't want my drawer fronts to all look identical. I want them to all look a little bit different. But like if you were doing flowers and stripes and, you know, kids patterns, things like that, you could use an identical look on each drawer front. So I'm just making sure here that I have every bit covered good. I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to pop this on, the last one. So let's see, I have that one and that one and that one. So I'm going to go with a little bit different look on this one. And I'm going to use There. So I'm just putting them on randomly so that each drawer looks different because the lettering on this is upside down and sideways and all over the place. So just spread it out with your hand just like you would with wallpaper. You work from the center out and then once you've got it basically pressed down, then if I had a wallpaper scraper I would or, or a spatula, I would use that even. I mean, that would work too, just as well as a brayer. But this has a nice coating on it, like I said, so I'm not afraid to press really hard into it. So because I didn't let the Ultra Grip dry first, it's going to start to bubble on me a little, a tiny little bit. I watched it before, and I noticed that it did bubble a little bit. So I'll show you one that's almost done. Okay, so this one I did about, actually there's absolutely no bubbles on this one, <laughs> that's awesome. I did this one about uh, half an hour ago, maybe, but I'll show you if you do get bubbles, um, you plug in your iron, it works very, very well, Wait, even when it's completely dry, and I'm just plugging in my iron over here so I can show you guys. And you just put it on medium heat. Okay. I'm going to go this way. Hopefully you can still see. Here. Um, I'm just going to plug in my iron. And I have a piece of parchment paper that I cut from earlier. And what you do is just use parchment paper. Parchment paper can take heat up to 400 degrees. So with um, the iron, what it does, if you have any little bubble, and I mean, this is really, really good, except there's one little bubble here. Um, and this Ultra Grip is completely dry. So you can still use the parchment paper over top of your tissue paper. Uh, wrapping paper, newspaper, whatever you are putting on your piece, and just let your iron heat up a tiny little bit, just to medium heat, and go right over top of your parchment paper. And the parchment paper protects the paper underneath. It helps to seal all the edges because it really dry. It it reactivates the ultra grip basically is apparently what it's supposed to be doing. So just go over it a little bit. Make sure you've got it all. And that is that. Pretty simple. 
So you can just do all your drawers and then, you know, get your paper on and then all at once do your parchment paper ironing and then you're done. And that smoothed that out completely. So it's completely smooth now. So that is good. Um, so how do you get this off? Some people um, use, just gonna move you in a little bit here, sorry. Some people use a knife. Some people use scissors. But the very, very easiest way to get this off, and I kid you not, you could see it happen before your very eyes, is 150 grit sandpaper on a sanding block. You have to use a block uh, because, or a, a sponge, you know, um, I'll show you what a really good block is for sanding. Uh, do you ever get these Scotch Brights? These are just a kitchen pad, but they make excellent sanding pads. I mean, you can take that apart and wrap your your sanding paper around it, and they're excellent. So um, I keep those on hand because sometimes I lose my sanding blocks, and I just grab one of those. So. This is how you get the edges off with all the trim off without um, trying to cut it off because if you cut it off, you're going to have a rough edge. So watch this carefully. Take your 150 and you go against the ridge and you just keep pressing it. You see that? Just like that. And it leaves an absolutely perfect hard edge. So I'm going to go around, this works really well, it doesn't matter what the paper is, if you do this, you are going to have it come out perfectly each and every time. So then we'll take this edge, and this one's a bit stickier, but it's going to come. And that's okay, you just keep working it till it comes off on its own. And just any little bits that are stuck, you just keep working at it. So there I have one little bit here. One little bit here. Now, that is a perfect edge. And also when you're doing that, it sort of presses the paper um, into the, this has a really tiny edge, so this would be a bit tricky, but it presses the edge right into the glue, and then it's a perfect edge after. And then what I'll do later is I'll let this dry. You know, probably, I don't even know if I need to let it really dry, but I will, um, probably a couple of hours. And then I will get my tough coat um, or my polyurethane and I'll do a coat on the drawer front and I typically do always put a coat of something on the drawer fronts when I do drawers because I think they get a little bit of abuse over the years drawer fronts so that is a really tiny do you see that a very thin piece of paper and this took it off perfectly. So I didn't have to use an exact knife. I didn't have to be super, super exact with it. So then just brush it off. Um, at this point, check for any loose edges, but there's absolutely none. So that drawer is perfect to go and what I will do with the other two that we just did is bring them up and do the exact same process. It's pretty easy and pretty fast once you get doing it. Um, and like I said, if you do, you know, four or five or six drawers at once, if you're doing a dresser or whatever, it's really handy to... Uh, just heat up your iron a long time and do these all in a row. So this is the one I just did. And the glue feels a little bit damp. And like I said, a lot of people let the Ultra Grip dry, then put it on, then do the parchment. But I just let it get kind of tacky, like 10 minutes. 
Um, I don't have a lot of time to sit around watching glue dry, so this is still a little bit damp underneath, but that's fine. So I'm going to put my parchment paper over top and get my iron. And by the way, this didn't have any bubbles, so I was just feeling it. So it went down really nicely. But just because I want to really seal the edges around, I'm going to iron it out again. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to comment and then I can answer them afterwards. And let me know where you're from or if you're new to furniture painting. This is a, a table that we're changing into a coffee bar, so it's going to be a really cute little piece after, and I'm trying to make it into sort of a French uh, cafe type of bar. Okay, so that one is done. And while I have my iron out, I'm going to grab the other one, actually, because why not? I might as well get them all done. Um, there is super cool sites on, on um, the internet. I believe one of them is called Zazzle, Z-A-Z-Z-L-E. Um, and they sell all kinds of papers. Um, you can go to your local craft store and get all kinds of really interesting papers. You can use... Uh, what do they call it? Scrapbooking paper, um, wrapping paper. You can use material exactly the same way, except with the material, I believe you'd want to cut your piece just the right size. But I mean, there is some gorgeous. Um, you can use table napkins, the kind that you have for your your dinners and things like that. And that one's done. So that part of it's done. But if you go to Zazzle, um, you can order stuff online, but also check out Amazon. Um, like I said before, I don't use a lot of, I don't order a ton of stuff from Amazon, but sometimes I go on there to look for uh, things like knobs or um, special things I need for my painting here that I can't find easily in town, or if I did go to town, it would take me you know, half a tank of gas. It's just easier to order it sometimes, so. Now that one has come off good. So this is super easy. So this is 150 grit, and you just go against the ridge. And it's not wrecking my paper here at all. It's just fine. Go super fast. Some people go like this, but I find that wears out the paper a bit, and I prefer to go against the ridge so it, it acts as a sharp cutter for me. Yeah. There's always a little tiny bit that seems to want to stick, so but that's good. It tells me that my glue is sticking. Okay, so that is how easy it is to get this off. Pretty simple. And when you decoupage a piece, um, it just brings it to a whole new level of coolness. Pretty neat. So in the end, because I adjusted where I put the paper, I should have four completely look, uh, completely different looking drawers, which will be kind of neat. And then next time you see me, guys, uh, see me, um, I'll have all the drawers in, and I'll probably have the hardware on because I got some nice brass. Um, knobs, but I don't have enough of them, so I'll have to go get a few more of them and just see if I can find something. I kind of try, when I put knobs on, I always try to find things that are piece appropriate, so they suit the style of what I'm aiming for. Um, I often take a piece and completely change it from its original look. And usually when I do that, I have to buy new hardware because it just, the old hardware just doesn't do it anymore for it, you know. So, and I love going to Lee Valley. Lee Valley 
<clears throat> is my fun place for hardware. It's just amazing. And they're not expensive either. I think I paid $4 a knob or something recently for knobs in Lee Valley that were really beautiful brass. So this is the last drawer. And I think I've got it. A little sticky here. Doesn't want to come off. That's it, guys. Look. Isn't that cool? I mean, it's so fast. And I do believe I got four different looks out of the drawer paper. So that is awesome sauce. Yeah, I did. I got four totally different drawers, so that's perfect. Okay, so I am going to show you the stenciling now. This is my garbage. <clears throat> So I wanted to put a um, French style stencil on this and I have an old box that I'm putting on my table because I left the hinges on my door. <laughs> um, I just find sometimes painting around them is easier than all the hassle. So, um, We'll put a little bit of this chocolate paint in my container here. Don't need much of this paint either. It's, it's uh, pretty amazing. Okay, I'm going to get my tape, wherever my tape is. Oh, maybe I won't get my tape. I do need my tape though. Here it is. Okay, now, I have it situated so that this is about even on both sides and this lettering here um move that down a little bit this lettering here is about equal with the knob if i really wanted to get technical i would measure the distances to make sure they're equal distances but i'm not going to get that technical and i'm just going to tape it down you can use spray adhesive but Keeping it's just as easy. It just holds it in place so it doesn't move around on you. Okay, so this has my old tape. Um, that one's good. I need this one off. So this is Cafe Paris, number seven, Rue Saint Soleil, Marseille. Um, and I used this part actually on a dresser once, so it's pretty neat. So this is going to go on here because it is a coffee bar. I thought the cafe thing would be pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to take a little brush. This is like a little soft paint brush and I'm just going to slightly go over this just to, this is just going to seal the edges for me so that when I start tapping into it, it doesn't want to tend to go right underneath. A lot of people don't do this, but whatever works. You, you kind of, after a while, learn what works for you. <laughs> just a little dusting of paint, just to seal the edges of it for that color. I've seen people who tape everything off and actually spray paint their stencil and that just seems like a lot of work to me but everybody does things a little differently I think sometimes not to judge I certainly do things differently so again what I'm trying to do with these colors is I'm trying to um yeah. I'm trying to bring some of the brown from the cabinet itself where I didn't paint it um, out to the front where the, the gray is that I did paint. This is a super fine, soft, soft brush. It's, you know, can barely even, it barely even moves really. And all I want is to just get some paint around the very edges. Okay, now I think um, 
I think I'm going to use for for tiny bits like tiny bits like this you can get a tiny brush and go even smaller into this tiny stuff but I think I'm going to use my big one because it will cover more territory at once so all I've done is I've loaded my brush with chocolate brown and I'm going to take most of it off so that it just has it's just saturated a little bit inside here okay so we're going to start up here and it's just dabbing 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 that's all you do this isn't the best stencil brush so I might change it And you just want to dab, you don't want to really press too hard because um, you can push it right underneath the stencil and then you have a bit of a run. If you did that and the things really didn't turn out, you could uh, repaint your drawer. <laughs> just paint over it and start over and learn and do it right the second time. Okay, so I think I'm getting all these bits. I got a little dab there, but that's okay. And I'll get some more paint from my dry bit. Put that on here. So usually you have to do about two coats. I kind of like how this is sort of modeled looking though. It's not perfect. Kind of like old fashioned looking print. So I'm just going to touch up a bit of these spots where I think it's too white. It goes pretty fast once you get going, so um, once you know where you want your stencil, you can just kind of cruise from there. This is kind of an old-fashioned looking uh, stencil, and I think it will be perfect for a coffee bar. So I'm going to let that just catch some of the wind here. I think I might try my other brush. It's a little bit, a little bit better. Try this littler, smaller brush. Oh, that's better. You just have to check and make sure that you actually haven't missed any letters or any numbers or any pieces because this has such fine detailing in it that to get it back on the exact same place and touch it up would be pretty hard. So this is going to be uh, kind of mm, like old print, like you would see old print. So that's kind of the look I'm aiming for. I don't want the letters to be filled in really completely. I want them to look kind of opaque in places like they are looking, kind of abnormal. Maybe that's what you call it. And um, and it's just straight down dabbing. You don't want to be doing anything side to side. Just straight down. It goes pretty fast. Okay. I think I've got it so where I want it, I think. Alright, this is a big reveal. Um, normally I would let it sit for a couple of minutes and just sort of dry a tiny bit. Um, you don't want to leave it sit to dry right off. When you lift it off, I lift mine off this way like I'm flipping the page on a book because you don't want to lift it straight up. You can tend to smear it a little bit. So I'm just going to loosen my tape up top here and loosen this one a little bit. And I think I've got all of my bits filled in. Okay. And like I said, I, I didn't want the paint to be pure brown. I want it to have this sort of weird old-fashioned look to it. So let us see. That is too cool. I like it. Kind of neat. <coughs> <clears throat> now
Now, this did, when I'm looking at it, it did go out of the lines a little bit, um, probably because I had some uh, Floetrol in my paint. But um, it's okay because I'm going to sand this text back a little bit and then I'm going to do some antiquing on the doors anyway so that will look perfect after. And I really didn't want it to look like perfect lettering like you would see on a sign. So that is stenciling and this is, um, next time I'd probably use just a solid paint without any flow troll in it. But I actually like how it looks so we'll work with it. So I will leave you guys for today. It's getting really hot in here again. Um, that's the decoupage and a little bit of stenciling. I'll do some other stenciling on other pieces too, but. Um, uh, and then I'll put the drawers back in. I'm gonna find some hardware. I'm gonna finish shellacking the, the brown bit on this. Um, but I think it's gonna look pretty cool. And I will probably be on possibly tomorrow if not sometime on the weekend to finish this piece up so thanks for watching share with people you know who love to paint see you later bye guys